Australia's biosecurity system plays a crucial role in maintaining market access for our livestock and plant industries. Farm biosecurity covers a range of practices that help to keep Australian livestock and crops free of disease, pests and weeds. This short video provides a practical overview of biosecurity measures you can use in your daily routine to minimise the risks associated with moving anything off your property. Responsibility for biosecurity doesn't end when plant products or animals leave the farm gate. The measures in place on your property support biosecurity in your region, state and help protect Australia's valuable overseas markets. When moving plants and animals off the property, ensure your product is fit to travel. If your animals are showing signs of disease, don't spread it further by allowing them to leave. Before taking your animal to an agricultural show, sale or event, make sure it's healthy and check to see that the venue has acceptable biosecurity measures in place. If not, consider what you can do to improve biosecurity. So when I take my horse to an event, firstly I make sure he's in good health when he gets on the trailer and when I arrive at the event I make sure that he's going into a clean stall and if it needs to be wiped out I disinfect and wipe it out. I make sure he's not stalled next to sick horses, I make sure I take uh, clean water buckets and also my horse is fully vaccinated against disease. By maintaining good orchard and nursery hygiene, you can help minimise cross-contamination and breeding environments for pests and diseases. Ensure you have an adequate waste disposal collection point away and secure from your existing stock and water. Composting, burying or burning are ways to safely dispose of plant waste that's removed due to suspected pest or disease damage. To minimise post-harvest contamination, only potable water should be used for washing fruit and vegetable produce as part of packaging operations. A spray diary record should accompany each consignment of vegetables, fruit and nuts. Effluent, general waste and dead animals harbour disease and attract feral animals and pests. That's why they should be removed as soon as practical to ensure they don't contaminate your farm. When you do, it's best to use a specially segregated area, protected from wind, water and animals. Check to make sure you're meeting government and industry requirements for carcass, effluent and waste management before disposing of them. Effluent carries harmful bacteria that can threaten your livestock and crops. Careful effluent management will help minimise this risk. You don't want your plant stock, fruits, vegetables and grain spoiled en route to market. So make sure that your chosen transport providers take biosecurity and hygiene practices seriously. It's best to remove soil and plant material from produce before transport. Australia is one of the cleanest production areas in agriculture in the world. And for us to maintain this status, we must be very conscious of any source of infection or of plant or animal problems coming into this, into this country. The entire Shire is proclaimed a quarantine area and that prohibits the movement of machinery or planting material into this area. We are allowed to move our seed plant material interstate due to our quality assurance program and also the guarantee of a plant health certificate which is issued by the Department of Agriculture. If your produce or plant stock is being sold with that of others, try to keep yours separate. Try not to bring back unsold produce to your farm, but if you do, keep it isolated from other produce because you risk introducing new pests. The chemicals you use on your property to manage biosecurity risks can also create their own risks if not applied, stored and disposed of correctly. Vaccines, antibiotics, pesticides and all other chemical treatments used on your stock and produce must be applied with caution and in accordance with industry and government standards. Appropriate training and advice on the safe use of pesticides should be obtained before you use any chemicals to control pests. In most states and territories, anyone who applies pesticides and other chemicals must complete an accredited chemical training course, such as ChemCert or SmartTrain. Be sure to follow the instructions on the label and observe withholding periods. The misuse of chemicals can also lead to the development of resistance by pests and diseases, potentially creating new biosecurity risks and challenges. National and commodity vendor declarations are important documents, which should always be requested, as they provide a way for you to obtain information, such as residue status about the livestock you're buying. Well, all the chemicals are stored in the chemical cupboard in the workshop. When anyone comes onto the farm to give me a hand with, with drenching or whatever, 
I make sure that they're fully aware of the chemicals that we're using, the amounts that we're using, and they're following the correct uh, skill or technique to do the job. You are the most likely person to notice changes in the health of your crops and livestock, so use the simple biosecurity measures in this video to secure your farm and secure your future. For more information, visit the Farm Biosecurity website at farmbiosecurity.com.au. If you see anything unusual on your property, call the Emergency Animal Disease Watch hotline on 1800 675 888 or the Exotic Plant Pest Hotline on 1800 084 881.